DKA and HHS both look like high blood sugar emergencies, but they're actually two very different metabolic disasters. If you treat them the same, you'll miss what really matters. Let's break this down simply. Both DKA and HHS happen because the body doesn't have enough effective insulin. But what the body does next is where things change. In DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis, the body can't use glucose. So what it does is that it starts breaking down fat for energy instead. This is what creates ketones, which are acidic, and this is where the problem starts. This leads to metabolic acidosis, Kussmaul respirations, fruity breath, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and usually the patient population here is younger or type 1 diabetics. So the blood sugar is high, but not as high as HHS. So HHS or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, there's still some insulin activity, so ketones don't really form here. But glucose keeps rising and rising and rising, and we're talking extremely high blood sugar levels over here, often over 600 milligrams per deciliter or about 33 millimoles per liter. The body can't get rid of all of this sugar, so what does it do? It pulls water from the cells into the bloodstream. This then leads to severe cellular dehydration, especially in the brain. And this is why HHS patients often present with altered mental status, extreme dehydration, very high serum osmolality, and they are usually an older population or type 2 diabetics. Now let's back it up and look at it from a nursing standpoint. The priorities look similar, but there are some key differences. Both these patients would need aggressive IV fluids, insulin therapy, and electrolyte monitoring. But with DKA, you're also closely managing that acidosis and ketones, while with HHS, your biggest concern is fluid loss and neurostatus. If you comment glucose down below, I will send you a full DKA versus HHS study guide. So this goes over lab comparisons, nursing priorities, and more.